Well, I don't know about you, but I am so glad to finally know when our beloved Oklahoma Sooners are going to enter the Southeastern Conference. July 2024, meaning there's just 18 more months of hearing every fan of a bottom-rung SEC team telling us all how we're going to suddenly become South Carolina or Missouri or to quote them verbatim, the Nebraska of the SEC. Well, let's talk about it. back to the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Watkins. And if you love college football, you're in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. Well, it's been fun the last couple of days finding out that Oklahoma and Texas will indeed enter the SEC after this final season of 2023 in the Big 12 Conference. Uh, It's just so much fun. You know, you get to hear, as I said, all of these bottom-rung SEC fans um, talking about how Oklahoma and Texas Blue Bloods of college football suddenly becoming nobodies and just also rans in the juggernaut SEC. It's it isn't coming from any Alabama fans. I haven't heard any Georgia fans say it. Not to say that they wouldn't. Um, but actually some of the content creators that I've heard around uh that are Georgia, Bama, those guys. They generally expect that Oklahoma and Texas will be about as good as they always have been. Um, What that equates to in championships and such uh, is debatable, but um, it's only these bottom run guys, these Missouris and, um, you know, (laughs) South Carolina types, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. You're not hearing it from Vandy because they don't talk trash to anybody. I mean, good grief. But even your Kentuckys of the world are out there saying stuff like this. It's almost as if you're acting like these guys, these people are actually acting like, oh, you and Texas are going to be playing Alabama, Georgia, LSU, and even maybe Tennessee every week. You know, when the Mizzou's, Kentuckys, Vanderbilt's, and South Carolina's actually still exist. So, yeah. Look, I'm not going to sit here as an Oklahoma fan. I mean, and I've been an Oklahoma fan since I was in diapers. Love the Sooners. I've seen the best of them. I've seen the worst of them. Um, I'm not going to sit here and act like they're going to go in and do what they did, you know, as close back as just a couple of years ago when they won their sixth straight Big 12 championship. That's not something that you should expect. Any Oklahoma fan should expect whenever they enter the SEC. This is, albeit top-heavy, the most competitive conference in the country, producing the most NFL players, the best players, the the best teams of the last, well, at least 20 years. 
when you have schools like, well, up now Georgia, who Kirby Smart has running pretty much the way that Alabama has been running for the last 10, 12 years, uh, even longer. And then an up and coming team, you know, you've got your LSUs who went out there and may have been the greatest single season team of all time, at least the, as far as I've seen, um, they're right up there with that USC team back in the early 2000s. Um, yeah. You're going to have these teams out there. Now, does that mean that Oklahoma can't and won't be able to compete in this league? No, it doesn't. And the funny thing is, is it you're stri- most of these folks that are saying these kind of things are ascribing the strength of the SEC's elite to the other 12 programs or even the other 10 if you want to throw in LSU or Tennessee or whoever, although Tennessee just now uh, beat Bama for the first time in 15 years. I'm not exactly ready to crown them. What I'm not going to do is sit here again, as I said, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Oklahoma and Texas and and particularly not Texas because they haven't even done anything in the big 12 lately. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that OU is going to go in and have the same kind of success that it had over the last 10, 15 years. They probably won. Well, I could look it up, but it's, well, I know they won six in a row, probably 10 of the last 15 or so conference titles. The truth is, that's just not going to happen. And in fact, as I heard our boy Uncle Lou say, uh, I I was watching his video from yesterday, and I was surprised that he actually was saying the same thing to a lot of these SEC fans. Is like, don't be stupid. You know, Um, Alabama doesn't win six in a row. Georgia isn't going to win six in a row. There's not a, a... LSU, any none of these top level programs, whether they be Florida or whoever, at whatever time, has ever done that. It's just not something that's going to happen in that conference. So no, Oklahoma's not going to do it either. Now, does that mean that Oklahoma can't win its fair share? No, it doesn't. And I think that our, our already that we're seeing that going into the SEC, Oklahoma is changing the way things are done. Uh, with, with Coach Venables, you're recruiting on a level like those SEC programs, obviously not quite to the to the to the level of Alabama yet or Georgia yet. You know they were number one and number two. Alabama just uh, had the most five star recruits, I believe, in history um, in this latest recruiting class. But Oklahoma did have seven top one hundred players, three five star players five-star quarterback, and very heavy on defensive studs coming into this class. So for those of you saying, well, Oklahoma better get used to those six and seven win seasons, you know, you aren't even making yourselves or your or your conference appear like they're the sharpest knives in the drawer. And I mean, statements like these are really just lazy. It's just lazy. Um. And why? Because Oklahoma and Texas aren't going to be playing the elite schools of the conference every week. You don't have to play Alabama three times in the season. You don't have to play Georgia three times in the season. In fact, you're probably not going to play both of them in the season, starting off Alabama and and Georgia. Or Alabama, Georgia, and LSU. I mean, it's just probably not going to go that way. It's probably going to be more along the lines of, you know, you're going to start off with Missouri and you're going to beat the crap out of them. And then you're going to, you might have Arkansas. Probably a pretty good game because it is a, you know, border rivalry type of deal. But more times than not, Oklahoma should beat them. Then they may get your, hey, let's say they get Georgia after that. And right now, I would tell you that Georgia's probably going to beat Oklahoma, you know, more times than not right now. 
in a few years, maybe that changes. Right now, Georgia is the back-to-back defending national champions, and they just beat the brakes off of TCU in the national championship game for their second in a row. So that may be a loss. The week after that, you're going to play, let's say, Florida. Old group of five, Billy. I'm not too sure that he's got the the old Gators right where he needs them yet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Oklahoma probably wins that one. Then you're going to play Ole Miss or Mississippi State. Might have a win there. You might get LSU after that. Well, maybe you don't win that one. So there's two losses. Okay. But then if you turn around and you play Texas A&M, heck, OU has beaten A&M. What is it? 18 out of 27 all-time meetings, and they lost the last one. I will give them that. Oklahoma, or Texas A&M did beat OU in the Cotton Bowl in 2013 and beat them pretty handily, 41 to 13. But they did lose nine of the previous 10 and 12 of the last 14. And, you know, won 18 of 27 total meetings between the two schools. It may be Texas's little brother, but it's still our little cousin. Okay? This is kind of how it is. As far as, you know, Tennessee. We love Josh Heupel here in Oklahoma. uh, And we think he's doing a great job. He is doing a great job. But OU is 3-1 and lifetime against them. Um... They they did just beat Alabama for the first time in 15 seasons in view of the fact that, you know, they did turn around and get beat, and I mean cooked, by Spencer Rattler. This is the same Spencer Rattler that I watched get jerked out of the first quarter of his last Red River game, down 28-7 and throwing temper tantrums like a little child toddler fits on on the field after throwing interceptions and fumbling. And this was two years in a row that he really did that. He had to be benched twice in the Red River game. Somehow they won them both. The second time it was monumental because of Caleb Williams. But uh, that's why South Carolina got him. So, you know, and as good as, as South Carolina is starting to look, and, and I'm, a, I'm a fan of uh, – I'm a fan of the way they're doing things there now. Uh, I'm going to tell you that I don't believe that that is a program that's going to beat Oklahoma nine out of ten times. I don't think they're going to beat them five out of ten times. To be quite honest with you, that's just not the way things are. Uh, Texas A&M also lost to App State a year ago, despite having the number one recruiting class of all time, according to 247. Arkansas got beat by Liberty. You know, again, it trolling is one thing, guys, and I and I can handle all that. And it's particularly coming off of a six and seven season when when we saw what happened to the Oklahoma team after Lincoln Riley left. It's easy to pile on. It's easy to pile on there. But here's the one thing I know: if if Oklahoma is going to do anything, it's going to always try to hold up their place in that elite group of college football teams. And as good as the top of the SEC is, Oklahoma actually has a winning record against the SEC all time. They're not afraid of them. They've beat Nick Saban with Trevor Knight. They beat Nick Saban in the Sugar Bowl. So I don't know. That's all I got to say about it. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Hey, folks, don't forget that you can help support this show and make sure that we can continue bringing you great content week after week on the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast with tips. Uh, You can either shoot us a tip on Venmo, which is right there on the left side of the screen here, or Cash App, or you can just hit that little super chat heart and pop us a tip in there. There's always pod merchandise as well. Get your horns down hat. Uh, the five B's of Oklahoma. That's a funny shirt. Check it out. And that's uh, there at just to the right of the screen. Or you can actually buy all your favorite team gear 
on our Fanatics partner link. That will get you up to 65% off everything in the store just for using that link. We get a small commission for everything you buy. You help the show continue going. Don't forget, hit that and make sure that you like and subscribe. That helps. That's free. That helps all content creators keep going. Thanks. Again, 18 more months to hear all this stuff. And then uh, we'll get to try our luck with the SEC. Can't wait. See you guys on the next one. <laughs>